Hey everyone, Walker here. Today we're Blue Mage speedrunning the Anti Tower. We want to get better memories for our resistance weapons as fast as we can, and clocking in at 7 minutes and 48 seconds, the Anti Tower is fast. I found it to be much faster than Pug Groups, which usually take around 10 to 12 minutes, depending. The gear that I am using is set up for speed. Speed. I got this setup from Liam over at Blue Academy. Check out his channel for this setup, as well as lots of Blue Mage tips and tricks. First up, for our spells, we absolutely need Ethereal Mimicry. Uh, we're going to head into Anti Tower as a DPS Mimic, so make sure you have DPS set up. You don't need heal, you don't need tank. We want DPS. Next up, Sonic Boom. This will be our weaving single target spell. It has a short cast time for only 10 potency, less than a standard 2 second spell cast. Very useful. Basic Instinct in Mighty Guard, of course. Mighty Guard is uh, your damage reduction, and my Basic Instinct eliminates the damage dealt reduction that Mighty Guard does. Use them in conjunction with one another. Mighty Guard, put up whenever you want basic instinct. Remember, put that up as soon as you get into the dungeon. Our primals that we're taking, as our base can't live without them, are Sopernica, Shock Strike, Feather Rain, J Kick, Night Bloom, and Phantom Flurry. However, if you are a crit mage, I'm a speed mage, if you are a crit mage, Consider replacing Feather Rain with Eruption. Because I am a speed mage, the DOTs on Feather Rain actually benefit from my additional uh, speed spell. Spell speed. Yeah, spell speed. Uh, whereas if you have a lot of crit, Eruption is going to be a better choice. Uh, I use... White Knight and Black Knight Tour. Due to the potency buff they give each other, they buff one another for 400 potency uh, to the first target, and then half again to the next targets. That's not bad. They're also excellent line AoEs, and the stuff in any tower just loves to light up for you, as you will see. Cold Fog should be used just before you engage in the second and last boss. Uh, so you get hit with their auto attack, which will then activate Touch of Frost, letting you use White Death, a 400 potency spell, which is an instant cast for 15 seconds on its cooldown timer, which is same as all the rest of the recasts. One cycle of Cold Fog should net you 5 to 6 casts. It's pretty much one of your best damaging dealers uh, for the time of its duration. Rose of Destruction is a nice off global cooldown single target spell 400 potency ignore the 10 y'all knockback no one cares about knockback <laughs> uh, use it whenever it's up if this is a your it, it it's ready to cast cast it doesn't matter if you're fighting a group of mobs or if you're fighting a single mob just use it level five death doom i meant doom not level five death doom everything i say is correct except Doom it has a special place in the Anti Tower. There is one boss that's immune, uh, not immune to it. There's one boss that is susceptible to it, which is the first boss. You use it on the first boss and then forget that you even have it. Ziggy and Kalkabrian are immune to it. White Wind is there to top off your hit points. Remember that it only heals half of your current hit points, so use it before you get too low, or else you'll be double casting it. I like to use it at around one third. One half to one third, because then I know that I'll be topped off enough that my auto heal should take care of the rest. Anything less than one third, and you're probably going to be double casting it. Whistle and Tingle are there specifically to buff Triple Trident. Tingle does have a little bit of an AoE damage. It's not a lot. It's 100 to the first, and then 50% less to all the remaining enemies. It's main primary use is to buff the potency of the next physical spell to one uh, by 100 which would be triple trident so that plus that makes triple trident extremely powerful ram's voice and ultra vibration ram's voice is your primary damage mitigator if the enemies cannot hit you if they are prevented from hitting you if they are slowed to hit you 
anything to reduce how much damage you take from the enemy is damage mitigation. Fight me on it. Don't. I don't care. It's damage mitigation. But it also freezes enemies for you to use Ultra Vibration to kill them instantly. Now, Ultra Vibration has a long recast. Mine is 108 seconds. Uh, yours will vary based on how much spell speed material you have slotted. This is going to have much longer cooldown than that, obviously. Use Ram's voice any time you have a group of enemies. It freezes them. Use it. It will prevent you from taking damage. It's a damage mitt. Uh, so don't feel like you can't use Ram's voice if Ultra Vibe is on cooldown. Ram's voice is there for a reason. Use it. Moon Flute. This is your buff for the final boss. Uh, specifically, it's going to be used to buff Final Sting. If you miss the cycle, which we will see the cycle when we get to the final boss, uh, it just means you're going to be waiting an initial 20 seconds, and then you'll cast Moon Flute again and use Final Sting. Uh, the final boss has a nice setup where if you cast Moon Flute, you'll have just enough time to get through enough of your instant casts and have just barely enough time to get a final sting off and kill the boss outright. If you miss that window, it's another 20 seconds before you can then final sting and kill the boss. Not a big deal, but you know we're trying to go for speed here. Um, otherwise, yeah, you have to wait for Waning Nocturne to cool off. But again, if you hit the cycle just right, uh, that Waning Nocturne, it doesn't matter. You're going to be stuck in the uh, dollhouse uh, attack, and you're waiting for that to wear off anyway, so... Yeah, and that takes longer than Waning Nocturne. Anyway, again, that's for Final Sting. Final Sting is going to be used once, hopefully, in the dungeon. Well, you'll only be able to use it once anyway, regardless of if you win or not. And then, hopefully that'll kill the boss. This slot is your freebie slot. I have Glass Dance because it's an instant primal spell. 350 potency to the first enemy, 50% less for all remaining enemies. It has a couple of really unique places where if you use it, you actually activate the enemies a few seconds sooner than they normally would, uh, which will shave off a little bit of time. Uh, I prefer this over anything else because, again, it is an instant spell. You can use whatever you'd like. I highly suggest you take last days. That's the spells we're using. Go find a DPS to drain their ether from, hit solo sync, and enter the anti-tower. We'll see you in a second. Alright, so here we are in the Anti-Tower. We're going to basic instinct right up quick. We're going to remember to put Mighty Guard up. And then we are just going to keep holding run until we know that we can sprint. And it's going to be now. Here we go. There's a little musical cue that will let you know when you can start sprinting. So we're going to swift cast Ram's voice right at this first set of mobs. And then ultra vibe them down. And that will be the end of that. Look at that, we even had some sprint left over. J kick in, Ram's voice so they can't hit us, and then just unload some primal hell on these guys. That Pirogo's gonna survive probably everything. I shock struck him there, but you could love if with that little bound of health left, he would have died to Nightbloom. We're going to come up, Ram's voice these guys, and then run behind them, turn around, and use Phantom Flurry against them. And this Pirogo is going to survive, so we'll just hit him with a Glass Dance, and maybe a Feather Rain. Freeze these two guys, line them up, and go between White and Black Knight's door. Remember to rotate your mobs so that uh, you can get that 400 potency on both of them. Then we'll just uh, Sonic boom that last little bit of health off him. Sprint to the first boss and let's hope that um, Doom sticks. Did not. Alright, so we'll cast it again. This is number two. No, number three. No, number four. Number four stuck. Alright, so that's four times two, so that's eight seconds. Uh, well, no, because we swift cast, so uh, six seconds that we lost there. 
not a big deal. I'm just gonna run around till he's dead and then head on to the next section. Yeah, if you're lucky, that will hit on the first hit and um, a little stick on the first hit. And he's dead in 15 seconds. We're gonna ignore these mimics and bring them down. We're not going to ultra vibe this set. There's three rounds. So there's the main set. There's these two sprites that are coming down here, and then two after them. So we freeze the first set and use a bunch of primals on them. Then we will freeze the sprites and then we're just going to rotate black and white knights to until they're all dead. And I got a little fessed up here. That's okay. A little low on health, but we're okay. This set we're going to freeze because it only there's only two sets here. There's the Spriggan, the three Meroliths, and then the two sprites. We're gonna freeze all of these guys, freeze again the, the sprites, and then ultra vibe down. Then immediately we're gonna freeze this Merilith. Then we can use a white wind. Just give us a little bit of buffer. We shouldn't need it, but that's okay. We'll just do it just in case, because we have the time. We gotta wait for the sprites to come down anyway. Again, line up that cone. That cone is key. All right, so we missed one, so we'll just give him a little bit of a Supernica. Or you could have Sonic wound him. Then a white wind, Ziggy hits hard. Swift cast, cold fog, J kick in, he hits us once, and we can start using the white death. So that's two, three, four, five, six. Oh, are we gonna get a seven? Oh, uh, no. Almost, though. Almost seven. That's pretty cool. Alright. Just use some AoEs to knock out two of the Stardusts. And then go through uh, all of your cooldowns. We're gonna tingle and whistle and triple trident him. Hit him with some rows. Uh, we'll, yeah. And while everything's on cooldown, we just hit the Sonic move. Don't worry about your health so much. Ziggy hits hard, but as long as you've topped yourself off before the fight, you should be fine. We do have to follow mechanics because we don't want those debuffs. So we're just gonna hit them. All right, Spronica's up. Let's just get on that a little bit. Uh, Rose of Destruction is up. We'll hit him with that. And J Kick, and he should be dead right about now. Good job, team. Yeah, as you can see, our health, it got a little low, but it wasn't dangerously low. I am going to... Uh, no, nah, I'm good. I'm good. Let's just keep going. So, with these guys, we are actually going to freeze and ultra vibe the first set. This hallway, uh, this f first run, is all just one set of mobs. Oh, I missed that centaur. So, freeze everyone, ultra vibe. I think now I will white wind. Come around the corner. So, this comes in three sets. So, you have these four and these two. And we're going to freeze and Phantom Flurry them. Wait until everyone gets close. So we don't have another mishap again. Turn around. I'm on legacy control, so I have to turn around. I don't just back up. Alright, we're going to Glass Dance activate these two. And then freeze them. And then White Black Knight store them down. We're going to rotate. And that's why. We took a lot of beat. Now we have the final set. Three sets. That's why we ultra vibe the first hallway. And we're just going to go through and use some primals on the two uh, dolls. And I didn't quite get the Viking dead. But that's okay. We'll just line up and do... Ah, oh, he's out of range. That's okay. He'll get in range. And he's dead. All right, now we're on to the boss. So the boss is going to go really fast, and I'm going to probably 
we're going to go through the fight and watch it. And then I'll pause at key points and explain what I'm doing. First of all, we're going to run up. And we're going to use Night Bloom as they pass by. And I hit all of them, which is excellent. So they're all going to die. And most of them will be dead before you even get a Sonic Boom off. Alright. Calcarina's going to come out. As soon as they jump toward the center, we're going to Cold Fog. Target her. Do a Feather Rain. Oh, I missed the Feather Rain. Yeah, that's fine. Just keep using. So we got two, three, four. Let her do her thing. Five, six, seven. I got seven off. We're going to White Wind as soon as she knocks out. Little trick. Okay, Whistle, Tingle, Moon Flute, um, kind of screwed the order up a little bit, that's okay, get your Triple Trident off, get Rose off, uh, get Whistle up, Swift Cast, Final Sting, it's dead, 7 minutes and 59 seconds, not my best time, my best time is uh, 7.46, but that's still a pretty damn good time, let's get back up on our feet. Back, back up on our feet. So let's go through that fight uh, a little more slowly. We're going to pause at certain points so I can explain what's actually going on. So right here, I'm going to use Night Bloom just as the Kalka and the Brinas start to move. And I should be able to time it so that I hit all of them. Night Bloom will outright kill the first one it hits and heavily damage all the rest, plus puts dots on them. And then you can pick them off with Sonic Boom at your leisure, but they shouldn't even be able to get their AoE off if you time it right, and if they do, um, barely. So you want to time this relatively good. Oh my god, that looks horrible. Uh, as soon as you see them jumping, not too soon, not too late, you want to use Cold Fog. If you do it too soon, Cold Fog will wear off before her auto attack hits you. If you do it too late, her auto attack will hit you before you get Cold Fog attached. And then you have to wait for the second auto attack and it might not hit before Cold Fog comes off. Cold Fog is, you got five, five second window. It's a little bit risky for bosses like this, but you cannot beat that. Seven hits of potency 400 in 15 seconds. So this little trick is works the same way Missile does. The game tends to resolve damage in order, but it keeps in the buffer what that damage should be. So she's using Knockout. We're casting White Wind just a bit before her Knockout finishes casting. Our White Wind is going to finish casting before she actually hits us. And so according to White Wind, we should have almost full health. Now it's still going to do some funky weird math stuff, but we're going to be almost full health instead of... Um, like near nothing health. It's kind of cool how it works. So again, just as soon as White Wind resolves, you want to put Whistle and Tingle up. And while she's doing Brace, you're going to want to get Moon Flute up. You can do it during her Brace cast. I try and do it as soon as viably possible. In this case, it's going to be just as her brace ends. And this will set up, the timing is almost perfect. Moon Flute lasts 15 seconds, her brace lasts 15 seconds, and then she, well no, her brace lasts like 12 seconds. And then she has a few moments where she's stunned, and then she goes straight into Dollhouse. If you time this right, you can get moon, uh, the Moon Flute phase through and kill her before she dollhouses you. If she dollhouses you, you've lost 20 seconds. But 
waning nocturne cools off during those 20 seconds. So then you can go right in, moon flute whistle, and final sting her after that, and you've only lost 20 seconds. It's a, it's a very nice window, but we managed to get the final sting off. So let's see what we do through this. I'll pause it one more time, and then we'll be done. So as you can see, it's a little bit hectic. We're pretty much just looking for anything and everything that's an instant cast that's off cooldown that we can fire off at her. Also, we want to get that triple trident in because that's going to do a heck of a lot of damage. Plus, I had Rose of Destruction up. And actually, looking at this pause screen here, I could have ignored that. Moon Flute plus Whistle will do enough damage with Final Sting that it does roughly 30 to 35% of her health. However, we do have the time. We have four seconds left on Moon Flute. Even after that Rose of Destruction, we have plenty of time. I could have probably thrown a Glass Dance in there too, but that's fine. Uh, you definitely want to get that Whistle up before you go for your Swift Cast. If you Swift Cast and then Whistle, uh, well, you may get Final Sting in before she Dollhouses, but you got to be really fast. Um, but in this case, we managed to get everything up. We burned through everything. We didn't need the glass dance. We avoided Phantom Flurry because that actually hurts us more than it helps us. And then we were able to get Whistle up. We're going to Swift Cast. And then Whistle plus Moon Flute plus Swift Cast is going to do a ton of damage to her. And, um, oh, plus Final Sting. You're going to do a ton of damage to her. And then we're going we're gonna to win. Yeah, so 150,000 damage now. If we were able to get a tingle in there, I would have been even more. But there's no need to because that's more than enough damage to finish her off. So that's anti-tower in under eight minutes. Like I said, my best time, seven minutes and 40 some odd seconds. And I think I said that in the intro. Unfortunately, I didn't get that time here thanks to Doom taking forever to stick. That's great. This is still a good time. Thanks for watching, everyone, and we'll check you all later. Bye-bye.